Welcome back to Code Co. We are continuing our series on a metal sheet coating plant where I am the new maintenance manager. This is a mini series. This is part four of five. You must see these in order. They're not going to make any sense if you look at them out of order. We are creating A3. We have the business case, current state, target state, actions, and we're moving on today to measures. This is Joe Kuhn of Lean Driven Reliability. Let's get into this. Financial impact uh, expected. This is a 12 month run rate. Remember, that's what in the business case, the lead team decided they were gonna measure us on. And guys, I, I really think these numbers, we're gonna kill them. We're gonna kill these numbers. So production, and you can see my math here. I'm not gonna just read it all to you. Maintenance downtime, going from 35 uh, downtime hours per week, that's all unplanned, to 20, and that includes our planned outage. Uh, remember, it's $500 an hour. That impact is $375,000 per year. Scrap generation, every downtime event results in 2,000 feet of scrap. We're going to reduce that from 21 events down to 11, $250,000 a year. Quality returns are about 100000 a month, if you remember. And about 20,000 of those we determined had an equipment root cause. Uh, we believe we can cut that in half, 120,000 impact. Green means positive. Total related savings that we believe we can be at a run, right, run rate at in 12 months is 745. And again, folks, I really think we're going to start getting results in about three months. And I think we'll, be, we'll just kill this number here, okay? Uh, cost of these changes. Uh, PDM certifications, training of people. Okay, I got 12.5, uh, and that's a one time cost, right? Uh, the CMMS system, there's 50,000 up front and then 12,000 a year ongoing. So you got to pay to get the system set up, get all your asset hierarchies in there, uh, pay for skills. Uh, this is something I really like having in there. Um, some organizations may choose not to do this, but um, this is what I would do if I was in the corner office. Uh, OE meetings, getting everybody involved. Uh, I estimate that's that's eight thousand dollars a year um, of increased overtime costs for that uh, thirty minute meeting uh, every other week. Total year one cost of one hundred and thirty thousand, uh, an ongoing cost of only sixty eight. Um, so <laughs> it's just some upfront setup things. So the business uh, impact, the net of all that is in the very first year, we're going to be 614,000 positive. That's our run rate, you know, just, just, just killing it. Um, and ongoing 678. So extremely positive results. Okay. Uh, other benefits, you know, first of all, engagement, we have a plan that provides hope to people, you know, and look at the culture we had before us against them, depression. I'm, uh, it, uh, this, this gives hope. There's a direct correlation between unplanned work and injuries and environmental issues. So your EHS uh, uh, performance will get better. Attrition, you know, everybody's in a battle for talent here and you've got a good plant where people are involved. Crews are learning new skills and they have opportunity for increased pay. Uh, that's a big part of, uh, of uh, hanging, hanging on to people. Uh, number four, the opportunity costs associated with poor reliability. This is a big factor. Uh, can be at some organization e equal to the savings that you're getting uh, where you work on things like line speed quality inventory control things because people at your plant are not in a uh, in a fire drill they are able to work on the business uh, not in it uh, huge huge opportunity costs at, at most locations hard to quantify that folks to be honest with you okay I'm sure you got some risk and concerns I tried to address two of them here uh, whoops. Uh, number one, uh, you don't have the real right skill set for the planner, PDM, or reliability engineer. Remember, that was fundamental. We took th uh, uh, some of our engineers or, or our uh, craft people and put them into these roles. Hey, folks, number one, do the best you can with what you have. Coach them, coach them, coach them. You'll be surprised at what you can get out of them. They're not going to be the perfect candidate. Uh, but if you did went out and found that perfect candidate, I'm telling you, it may cost too much for you. So uh, uh, this is an opportunity to get fairly a low-cost planner, low-cost PDM, and a reliability engineer um, with what you have. Uh, don't underestimate. I've been very impressed with what P 
people in the right environment and you give them the right expectation, the right coaching, what they can do for you. Hey, and if worst case, when somebody leaves, you know, you hire the right skill set. So that's my advice there. They're far going to be far more effective in these three roles than where you have them right now. Okay, so it's, it's better than your current state. Okay, Joe, 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 your savings estimates are way off. Uh, I still contend uh, my philosophy is under promise uh, and over deliver, and I still think we're into that camp. Um, but uh, what if I'm off by 50%? Say my numbers is just 2x, and you're just, you just think I'm crazy, and you say you're off by 2x. Well, let's do the math. 0. 0.5 times 678 savings a year, that's 339. This exceeds what the lead team said would be great in 12 months. So really, if we're poorly, if we're not successful at all, and we're just stumbling through this, and <laughs> we're going to be at a great level. Uh, you've, you've got nothing right now, and this, this is, uh, I can't imagine where this didn't deliver 50% in a year. Um, can't imagine that. So hopefully that helps. Um, and then also, folks, when you're evaluating these, uh, this option, you know, what's the cost of doing nothing? It's not same old, same old status quo. If you do nothing year over year, everybody's going to get a raise, right? Most places do. Uh, year over year, your health care costs are going to go up. Your assets are getting older. Uh, the increased cost of spare parts, increased cost to maintain as things get older, um, and your increased risk of a catastrophic failure that's going to include business interruption. Hey, doing nothing is high risk, folks. Doing nothing, uh, I believe, is the riskiest thing to do. Uh, and the amount that you're investing uh, in the option that I laid out to you is 130000 for a potential uh, 678 ongoing uh, impact. Uh, you're, you're not going to beat that. Uh, let me know. I'll invest in that. Okay? Uh, so, hey... Number three here, your choice is to be a victim and just let things keep going or to lead. And I think I've given you an option that uh, very low cost based in on observation and waste and rooted in best practices that gives rapid results. So, hey, we're on to the measure section of the A3. And remember, I believe... Uh, 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 in not measuring everything, I got 18 things here to measure, but I rank the uh, the top five, and that's from my uh, Warren Buffett 525 rule. Won't go into that right now, but let's. It's all about focusing. So, what are the critical ones? Hey, we're trying to drive sales. That's where the big money comes from. Sales per month versus our baseline. That's what gets people excited, and that's why we're going to be in business long term. Hey, let's let's count our maintenance out downtime hours per week. That's something we can directly relate to each each individual day where we're at that leads to the monthly numbers. And then track dollars. I always like having dollars in front of people. That's what we all can understand. The dollar value of the downtime and the scrap. You know how, how where are we tracking at? Uh, track the OEE on the two lines and the uh, quality returns. Now I have a lot of other supporting things to measure. Hey, did we have our outage that week? You know, total PM hours, you know, how many PM hours are we investing? Are we getting those seven people per week to do PMs? That's something you could track. Um, PDM cost avoidance dollars. You got this PDM person out there just knocking out things. Do we want to track that? Yeah, you could probably track a few of these things. But like I said, these are the important ones up here. Uh, cost savings dollars. Uh, this big yellow box are audits that need to take place. I chose not to put this in actions uh, just because it would cloud it up. But, hey, folks, when you put in standards, the leadership team has to audit. So you got to audit the 5S at the lines, you know. Um, audit the craft operations connection. How's that going? You don't just assume it. You audit it. Um you know, the, you audit the pre-shift meeting for maintenance. You audit the pre-shift meeting that operations and maintenance have. And you audit the OEE meetings. Those, those meetings that are critical and drive engagement, I'd suggest you'd sign an elite team member to each one of these. And maybe rotate them, you know, uh, you know, every quarter or something like that so everybody gets to see. Safety, performance, and attrition, folks. Okay, so hey, we've completed day three, folks. That's it. You know, we are expecting the first year run rate benefit of $600,000 benefit, that's in green, versus the previous maintenance manager said he wanted an upfront cost 
of 1.4 million. That's a $2 million swing, folks. And this, uh, this one had some hope around it and some culture problems that it was going to encounter where we set up the culture to welcome the change here and involve everybody in it. Um, this is the power of knowing your waste and not blindly applying best practice tools. Best practices tools are great, but if you don't know how to apply them and when to apply them, uh, they can actually turn into a waste of money like this over here versus a benefit. Okay. In the final video, you know, I'm going to have reflections, next steps, and culture change. I promise you it's going to be a short one, under about seven minutes. Hey, folks, begin your journey. I really don't think this stuff is that hard. Hopefully, I'm making it simpler for you that you can see where you're at now, me mired in mediocrity, and the small actions you can take to start your journey of best practices and, and world-class maintenance and reliability. You can get some free pointers from me via email and, or uh, you know, drop me an email uh, or make some comments on this YouTube video. Uh, and if you want an experienced guide, I guarantee I can shave years off your deployment. Hit like and subscribe. Thank you.